Hello, my friends. Katie Day with the Movement of Texas team here with another episode of the Real Advice Podcast. If you've ever been on real estate TikTok, which is a <laughs> specific genre or niche of TikTok, then you have seen our guest today. Real estate tea is what many people may call her. But Tamika, yes. what is going on? Thank you so much for joining the podcast today. How are you Absolutely. doing? Absolutely. No, thank you very much for that. Yes, real estate underscore T. Uh, man, me and the TikToks, like, look, I can't really dance, to be honest with you. It's just, it's it's a, <laughs> it's a smoke screen, well. but. I think you dance well. I, can, I certainly can't dance, but, you know. <laughs> but no, but it's great. But honestly, to be able to get your clients to do it, like that right there, that's the talent. That's the skilled part. Uh, I like and it. They, and they do it willingly. So, but no, it's, it's great to be here. Great to um, have a conversation with you, Katie. Well, and so I guess let's start the conversation today with TikTok. And <laughs> um, I met Tamika um, kind of through Clubhouse, but I definitely met her in person at an event that we both spoke at in San Diego. And yeah. she actually like her talk was great. And you know, lots of good takeaways and, and knowledge. But then at the end of her talk, she made like all of the people in the room get up and do a TikTok together. It was hilarious and awesome. <laughs> and um, I, I want to talk a little bit more about you getting your clients into your TikToks. Yeah. Right? So let's first start. Let's first start like from the beginning. Right. And so like, you know, when did you get on TikTok? When did you realize that this could be something to help you, you know, educate people, generate business and just be like that community pillar? Yeah, no. <laughs> and, and thanks for participating in that TikTok. Um, no, uh, it was early uh, 2000s. Um, that's probably yeah. where I first said, you know what, I'm going to do something a little bit uh, different. I'm going to go into this industry and especially everything being locked down and shut down. I really had to think like, hmm, how else can I get um, business out? Because a lot of my stuff is referral based. And man, like, well, how can I reinvent myself? To be honest with you, when you've been in this business for a little bit, you're like, you know, what? Th th there's so many pivots that you can do. This is just one of them. How can I pivot? And when TikTok came about, people were like, oh, that's just for like some little kids. Yep. <laughs> you know, I mean, we all said we all said it. We Everyone said, said it. it. Yeah. But I was like, hmm. You know what? I mean, I, have, I look kind of young. I'm not going to tell you my age, but you know what? Hey, I think I think I could actually make this darn thing work. And yeah. I actually was able to come through with a um, they had like a learning um, type of a TikTok that were, was going on at the time because they're trying to push more learning um, uh, TikToks at the time yeah. and not just dancing. So I was like, shoot, well, sign me up. And so that helped me kind of get kickstarted uh, in doing a lot of content and a lot of things on TikTok. Um, it wasn't until I actually got back into certain things were kind of lifted, you know, with us being yeah. able to talk with our clients or be able to go out with our clients that I was like, well, then shoot, well, then let me make this about my clients and my client base because I, I deal with some amazing people. Yeah. And from the first one that happened to the second one, I mean, it just kind of snowballed from there. And then everyone knew like, hey, look, if you go work with Tamika, you'll probably have a TikTok as well. But yeah. it, it garnered business also from that too, from other yeah. like millennial clientele. They were really excited about being able to do a TikTok. Um, and so that's what helped some of my business too on TikTok and people calling me for the simple fact that they wanted to work with me because they thought I was pretty fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, I mean, I, I love them. Like the videos with your clients of like, you know, the throwing of the keys or like them playing with a, you know, uh, the, yeah. like just sold prop or, you know, the yeah. red bow on the door or things like that. <laughs> and I think that like, it's, um, it's exciting. And cause what I like about it too, is like a lot of times either if it's not a dance or if it's not a trending thing, like yeah. then you're like voiceovering or captioning and telling the story. And I think that's yeah. something that like, is so big for me. Like I'm so tired of seeing Canva posted, just listed, just solds. Right. Yeah. And there's yeah. time and a place and you can have some of those peppered in, but like, I love hearing the story and hearing clients win. And then like, obviously if they're dancing in the video, like they're super excited and that's like, <laughs> that's heartwarming. I like it. It's good. Yeah. Well, truth be told uh, now, remember back in the, the, the day, you know, people really weren't caring about the buyer clients. They, they honestly, they, they, they were, I, I, I've been a huge buyer um, um, agent for a long, long time. And my buyers have now turned to sellers. And so it's, it's pretty much a mix with, with, with what I do, yeah. but for the longest time, especially in the market with COVID, it, right like I said what's the best thing that people need to hear right now because like forget hearing it from me as an agent you know what? hear from the people that are actually going through this saying I'm going to take a chance in this crazy market and I'm going to get myself a home yeah. and like those stories started to snowball one after the other and some of them I'm serious like had like a straight miracle 
overheading underlying theme to it and yeah. you know we're going to tell it i don't care like yeah and then once that started to happen now people see stuff now and they're like well, story after story after story y'all ain't care about the diaries and then you just wanted a really nice listing video yeah but it's really really good to see that the champions that have been throughout this market has been you know just just great buyer stories and i think that's really helped people continue to get out there and to continue to put their hats in and continue to especially in competitive markets and yeah. continue to believe that something is actually possible and giving them hope so <laughs> yeah it definitely no, for sure helped. Well, and so, you know, I think that like, okay, you've been on TikTok for a while, obviously had done other <laughs> social media and other things prior mm -hmm. to that, right? Mm -hmm. And like, I think part of that's like, you always have to be, um, you know, continuing to evolve and pivot and and understand what like those new things are and getting on those yeah. platforms. So yeah. for someone today that may not be on Instagram, may not be on TikTok, it's like, ah, <laughs> like that, that, that train is passed. What, what advice would you have for them? Or what would you say to them? You know, um, when trains have passed, I think that that's kind of contrary. It all depends on the person and the individual, right? So I still go on and I still do uh, radio. Now, trains have passed, meaning trends and fads of certain things that just don't happen. But I get still a lot of business um, from radio. Um, and I continue to do that. Why? Because of the, the viewership right and and a lot of them do listen to talk radio and such and so i still do that so i think it just depends on the person and what fits your aesthetic um for me i will probably continue to be doing tiktok i mean when they said that trump was going to take it and and it's going to be gone and the chinese doing whatever i'm like honestly i was like i don't care uh it's one of <laughs> it's, it's one of my um platforms that i really do love um using so to be honest with you if other if everybody else gets kind of filtered out great I'm going to keep doing the thing. Yeah. Look, I'm going to keep doing the thing that make made me continues to make me and that I continue to love doing. And, and if anything, I'm just going to elevate myself in doing it and continue to gain that uh, market share. So to be honest with you, I probably won't stop because that's yeah. been just a really great, um, um, just a really great um, outlet for me um, in gaining uh, people, gaining clientele. So. Well, and so I guess my follow-up question would then be, do you mm -hmm. think that there's still opportunity if I haven't ever posted on TikTok before for me to join TikTok and as a real estate agent, actually garner business from it down the road? Or is like it too saturated and everyone's doing it? No, I, I think um, and that's the beautiful thing, right? If will people always st will stop selling um, T-shirts? No, they probably won't, uh, right? Because yeah. the person's not telling this T-shirt that that looks like you, that acts like you. But I'm yeah. saying, like one of the things that you should, um, you know, always look in, and that's why I did it. That's why I did it my way. Number one, there's like maybe three, four different types of TikToks that I will do. One with my client, one with um, an, an, a, a crazy way that I give information. Um, a third would be um, uh, like a narrative, like you had mentioned before, if they don't, they don't dance on, on camera, the narrative. Um, but there are four, like something that's really just heartfelt, like me talking about the industry and talking about what I like yeah. and what I don't like and showing my personality, right? So yeah. that, that across the board, um, as long as you're doing those type of, um, of things, believe me, you will attract the people. And especially if it's hot button topics, which there will always be in any way that you can show your counter um, culture type of personality or opinion on things. Oh, 100%. You will always continue to get business and continue to get looks and likes. And to, wait, Katie, like, honestly, it's it's not even about like your, your likes anymore. Like, I don't think yeah. that it is. <laughs> it's not even about your follower count. It's not even about the, how many people are following you. It's really the content and the essence of what you're saying. Because people yeah. are knowing you can just buy that the hell like you know you, you could buy that so without buying things you know are you still relevant yeah. um i think that's what's important no that's huge and i think that even even what you said it's like i mean you have four different kind of pillars that you're doing mm -hmm. all on one platform and those yeah. things can go to other platforms those things 100%. can be written word those like there's lots of different ways in which you can take that and, and radio that you mentioned right like there are yeah. lots of different mediums to deliver that um and i i feel like a lot of people I talk to, right, about mm -hmm. Instagram or TikTok or just yeah. even video in general, social media, social media in general or marketing. They're like, ah, oh, well, so and so owns that neighborhood, <laughs> or oh, well, blah 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 is a king of YouTube, and you know, and it's like there's still that opportunity because, like, yes. if you and I go into an appointment, they're gonna choose you or me, right? And it's the same yes. thing on social. Like, if we're posting in the same market, they're gonna gravitate towards you know someone more than another person so yes i mean but, see, but, but people need to understand even like newer agents too like their trends go come and and, and they go um but 
you know, and those are trends. But if you find something that's working for you, like say, for instance, if I wanted to get on YouTube, am I, am I the, uh, believe me, we know quite a people that just dominate um, YouTube, but guess what? They're not me, right? Yeah. Like I'm not them. Like they're like I am, you know, sitting here, <laughs> a black female going into, um, you know, a space that someone probably is like, you know, what? I've been looking for someone like you. Yeah, exactly. And if I'm coming through with some great content, look, there, there, it does not matter what you do in this industry. There's people always buying and selling. There's so many different agents, and I'm glad that these last two, three years are weeding out the ones that are just came in thinking that it's just, you know, easy. Easy, easy money. Yeah, that's, it's not it's not easy money. You always will have to continue <laughs> yeah. to reinvent yourself, you know, and I think those are these these are the real ones that are here yeah. saying, nope, I'm here to stay. And if you're here to stay, it doesn't matter. Like you will find business. Yeah. So for sure, <laughs> for sure, for sure. No, I, I completely agree with that. And that's something that I mean, all of these platforms, especially with the algorithms, like it's going to find yeah. your audience. So you just need to define who that is and who you're talking to. And, yes. you know, they, they will find it for you. And if people watch a video, especially on TikTok, they're, they're you're going to keep up with them. Even Yo, but Katie, I see your shoes and stuff, right? I saw your last one that you did with your shoes because that's your thing, right? Yeah. Like, but, but I, but I think if people like really understand, like, look, the real estate is real estate. That's just, well, that's one part of who you are. But yeah. honestly, if people open up more about their life and who they are, they'd be so surprised that you probably will have a flood of people come in because of the very reason why, like, for instance, I like Legos. I love like Legos, like Lego, the people will get me for that one, but I love Lego and I haven't been able to break out my other Lego um, pieces, my Lego sets. But honestly, that is one thing that continues to bring in a completely subset, a different subset of people um, that are attracted to me. Yeah. Aside from the real estate, you know, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. like sneakers, like that's a huge thing. Like if you have it and I see you kind of doing it more and more and I was like, oh, snap, she's on something. Yeah. Um, but that, but that like stuff like that, like you, you don't have to just talk about real estate. There's so many other yeah. things that you can talk about that make you incredibly unique. Um, and people will love that. So yeah. I love conversations like these and having conversations with people that make content and also consume mm -hmm. content because it's mm -hmm. like like you'll see changes in people's profiles or yeah. tweaks that they make or that you're seeing more of something. And so I appreciate yeah. that. Um, but yeah, yeah. I, I, this I, is some um, dope shoes, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's always interesting talking to people that do, you know, make a lot of content because it's like, um, you know, I know in my mind and I, I'm sure you do it, too. You're like, how what else can we do? Like you know, we, we've, we're doing this, we're doing it on a regular basis. Like we've, mm -hmm. we've got it in a good cadence. Like how mm -hmm. can we pivot? How can we adjust? How can we continue yeah. to be relevant? Because like, otherwise you turn around a year from now or five years from now and you're like still doing the same thing. And like, yeah. you know, perhaps at some point clients are going to be like, no, like, I don't want to be in your video. Like, <laughs> I don't want to be in your video. Instead, you know? <laughs> so you always have to find out that next kind of yep. next thing. Exactly. No, and, but see, that's, but that's the beauty about having like, just being an independent quote contractor or having your yeah. own business. Like that's the beauty about it. Like, and especially even a brokerage that, that, that celebrates that or pushes that or wants to push the envelope even more. I mean, we've seen like, there's been, I mean, I know Envision Media has done a whole lot of things yeah. like just, there's a, there's a lot of, and you see the pivots, you're like, oh yeah, that's pretty dope. That's pretty dope. like, and yeah. like, and it's not even like it's competition, right? Because honestly, I believe to, for me, it's such an abundance of people and different personalities and things yeah. like, honestly, that's never even an issue, but I am intrigued. Like, oh, you know what? How can I push that envelope a little bit more? Uh, get out of my comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and maybe do something a little bit more too. So if, if, if anything, I see it all and it pushes me. Uh, yeah. To do some um, stuff. <laughs> so it's funny. I know like you being uh, from the Bay, like obviously no Envision, yeah. they were at the that event. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I've become, I've become close with Brooks and, and yeah. uh, Roland. And it's funny because <laughs> Brooks now has those videos where he has his phone yeah. and it's like the text on the phone is scrolling. Yeah. And every time I see it, and I watched the entire video all the way through. I'm like, damn it, Brooks, you did it yes, again. You did you know, it. Because it's like, we, like right now on social, time on post is so important, right? So whether that's the yep. long caption or, yep. you know, really great content or whatever it is. And every yep. time I watch a video all the way through, I'm like, oh, you got me. Yep, you got me got again. Me. You got me. So, yeah, believe me, my team, we looked at that. I had I have like one or two. <laughs> I have one or two of them. I said, you know what, y'all? Like, obviously, I have these pictures. Like, you know what? what? Let's see what we can do. Let's see how this performs. But see, that's the cool thing about it, too, because sometimes 
things that someone else does, it doesn't perform that well with you. So you're always constantly, okay, okay, hmm, I wonder if something like this, I'm inspired. If something, I, I take an idea exactly, right? But I'm inspired and it's okay to be inspired. And I love that because for instance, yeah. Cal Tattoo, he says that stuff all the time. He's like, look, yeah. take it, but make it better, you know? Yeah. And yeah, I, just, yeah, I, yeah. Love, I love what he does because again, him, you doing something versus me doing something, the very exact same thing, it may be in, um, um, perceived and received completely different, um, sure. all depending on our audience. And so I think that's why I love it. I, I absolutely, I love this space. I love where we're at right now in real estate. Yeah. It's completely different from the last 18 years. And I think it's just, it's just a great space to be in as an agent. It, it just yeah. is. <laughs> um, so switching, well, switching gears a little bit, but shifting yeah. a little bit. So, you know, you mentioned your kind of content pillars and things. And one of the mm -hmm. things you said was like, you know, education, right. And then mm -hmm. also kind of like, not maybe not being controversial, but controversial topics are like taking mm -hmm. a stand. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of times agents are scared to share their opinion because I think people are going to tell them that they're wrong or, yes. you know, whatever. And I'm not saying not to, you know, hop up and start, you know, getting into politics and religion and, and yeah. those hot button items. But like, what are some things yeah. that you, um, have spoken about or that you feel strongly <laughs> about that are, are, I, I don't really want to say controversial, but those ones that are like those, those, those comment generator, you know, engagement type topics. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh yeah. 100%. Look, I, it's so interesting. Like the last two or so years, people talk about, Oh, be authentic, be transparent, be yourself, all that other kind of stuff. Right. And there's certain things, at least for myself that I cannot be, if it wasn't for this, like, like a big part of a lot of my business too, um, is, um, my involvement with my community, with my church community, for instance, yeah. at that. And to be honest with you, and it's not shoving it down anybody's throat. It really isn't. However, remember I talked about little things being miracles. I mean, when I'm able to be a part of seeing for the last two or so years, um, like a whole church community finding home ownership. And I, I, we're, we're talking about like hundreds of people finding home ownership in many different ways um, and finding hope and ha finding faith in, in, the, in the aspect of home ownership. That's not small. Um, and I can't yeah. stay silent about it because to be honest with you, if I was to stay silent about it, I'd be doing like just, I think disservice. I'd be doing number one, a disservice to my church, to myself, yeah. to my faith and to my belief. And so, you know, wh whatever it takes, I think, to get someone in the hope um, aspect and in, in, in the thinking that homeownership is a possibility, because that's for me, it's a reality for all, well, then I'm going to talk about it. Yeah. And then that's been probably one of the main catalysts that has held me in a box, at least myself, yeah. has held me in a box for a long time, being like, you know, starting in like 2000, what, four or five to get my, my license. And then that box, you could never go outside that box. You never talk about this. You never talk about well, politics and religion. Like you just, you just don't talk yeah. about, but there were, they came at a certain point, but like, I can't deny this. My, my, yeah. from my senior pastors to my executive, there's people getting homes and not supposed to be getting homes, you know? Yeah. Um, but that has been a, a huge catalyst, but I thought it was going to go the opposite way where people were just going to be like, Oh, psh, we don't even want to hear that. To be honest with you. And it went completely the other way. Um, and I still have a plethora of different clientele because they know I am me. It doesn't matter. I don't care who you are. Whether we get a, like a small thing, we can go on the faith part or we can go on the straight, you know, um, I'm qualified to do it. We're going to get you at home. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, I think, I think that's different. You know, I think that the, the people avoiding talking about like, you know, sex, politics, mm -hmm. religion, mm -hmm. you know, money, you know, all the, all the, th those hot button <laughs> topics. Like, yeah. you know, I think that, I think that sharing good news about people that didn't think that they were going to purchase. And this is a community that you are super involved in yeah. is far different than some of the politic and religion <laughs> conversations that people put on social media. Right. And so that's yeah. where, like, I think that people just hear that word and it's like, Oh, you know, cringe and, and concern. Yeah. But you know, when you're, when you're sharing, you know, such mm -hmm. happy news and especially about a community that you're, you're very ingrained in, yeah. you know, that's something that, that resonates with people in that community, with other people that are like, oh man, this is so wonderful. I've been having the same type of problem. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a problem solving thing too. Yeah, no, it, 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 it has, it's been very well received. And like I yeah. said, I, I have a plethora of different clientele yeah. 
And, you know, business is business. I like, um, you know, as far as, you know, gender, it, it doesn't matter to me. Um, however, what you will find from me is someone first and foremost, who's solid with integrity. And I hold that to the utmost um, standard. And it doesn't matter, you know, for instance, let's talk about it, right? The, one of the other biggest to topics is the type of loan product um, a client would utilize, you know, because in the Bay Area, truth be told, yeah. there's even some agents that have never, never worked with an FHA uh, deal. And I was like, are you guys serious? Like, yeah. and that was one of the things I said, you know what? I said, I am not going to be that agent. And you know what? I I don't care what client I have of mine. There is not going to be something that they're going to feel that their loan product is inferior in order to try to go for a home um, that they like. And yeah. I will never make them feel that way. And so, hey, look, absolutely. I was that one, <laughs> 15 offers on the table, my yeah. one FHA coming in. But you know what? I advocate it like hell. And you know what? I've had at least a dozen of them that have gotten accepted based off the advocate's advocacy of um, of what I've done as an as an agent and to talk with the other agent about the loan product from VA to FHA. And yeah. I'm super proud of that because in the Bay Area, you don't see that that often. Yeah, for sure. No, I mean, and just with the price point, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, but, million dollar, <laughs> 1.2 FHA. Yeah, you can do it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's crazy. I think that I think that that's the thing. I saw a, <clears throat> um, I saw a TikTok or a reel the other day from an agent that said, mm -hmm. Something to the effect of like, you know, it's not always the best offer that gets accepted on a property. Yeah. And they were like, generally speaking, in multiple offer situations, it's the agent that's the most persistent or the agent yeah. that's the most organized. And it's the, mm -hmm. and I think that, that a lot of agents, especially when they have a client that they're not confident in, right? Yep, and like, we know go. that like sellers are going to go cash, conventional FHA and VA. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's just mm -hmm. how things go. <laughs> and so yeah. if, you know, you do all of the things prior to putting in that offer, ensuring that they've submitted all of their documents to the lender. Mm -hmm. Perhaps they have an underwritten mm -hmm. pre-approval, like mm -hmm. getting the lender to call, you talking to listen, like, like doing all of those things, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. then some, right? Like mm -hmm. you, you might actually have a chance, you know, and that's where I think <laughs> that a lot of times people will just write it off. And it's like, you know, mm -hmm. we, we can do a lot more for our clients, right? If yeah. we're putting in the work, so one hundred percent, and and working as a team uh, with your uh, with your with your lender, like yeah. people, they they sleep on uh, that part. Like honestly, uh, well, a lot of the deals that I've I've talked about, the dozens of them, um, a lot of it has to do with me and the lender. Like there have been times that me and the lender, me and the loan officer, are like hey, you know, what? Well, let's go to the open house. We're gonna we're gonna <laughs> meet them face to face personally. Yeah. We're gonna know who we are. Like we're yeah. in this. And we're yeah. invested to make sure that this deal closes. And I, I'll be the first to tell them, like, hey, look, are, how comfortable, for instance, are you with a VA deal? How comfortable are you with FHA? And if they say not really, they said, don't worry about it. This is who I am. These are my credentials on it. I'm certified in this. And guess what? Here's my loan officer. They are as well. This is how many deals that we've closed. This is how close that we've come to, you know, many. We'll give them everything. Basically, yeah. you have to sell yourself. People, people forget that this this industry, and especially in a very competitive market, this is not just about selling the home or getting the home for the – you need to sell yourself. If you can't market yourself on what you know and what you don't know, and the person is absolutely right, the agent sells and solidifies the deal probably more than anything because what does everyone want? They want the deal to close, yeah. and they want to make sure that you know we have competent people on each side. And the more competence that you can show as an agent, the better it is for your client. And so these are just people like, hey, you you buyers and sellers out there, who you work with, man, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Get you, get no, you a Katie Day. I would completely day. agree. And um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I would, com I would completely agree with that. I think, you know, the... I, I just, I like, I just completely agree with everything you said. I have nothing else to add. There's nothing, there's nothing else to add. You did it all. Tied a bow on top, a red bow, Tied on, a bow top, on top and, of it. You know, all good. Let's yeah. go. It's Christmas time. Well, and so, so you know. <laughs> it goes, it goes well, you know, you're, you're the only brokerage uh, to sell more homes in December and November than any other brokerage. Cause you're just tying red bows on the houses. I so, mean, this is because people want to have it, you know, for their decoration. So right, I mean, right. hey, it works. <laughs> Where, so works. <laughs> for those of you that don't know, she has a brokerage and her, her brand is the Red Bow. And That's so it. where did that come about? 
because we're just yeah. over here we're just over here chopping it up and people are like why are they laughing about bows it yeah it's the holidays yeah so tell us tell us more about that <laughs> no we'll see i was also a founding realtor of equity one real estate over there in the bay area we were one i was one of six agents that helped start that and so while we were doing that, and that was over 10 years ago, and while we were doing it, the, you know, the bow was kind of like the one thing that I took with and kind of ran. People kind of did. They were just like, eh, because there's a lot of guys, which is like, I ain't doing no bow on the door. And so I took it. And then I started to actually brand myself by saying Red Bow Magic. And everyone, instead of them saying, hey, I want the keys or whatever, they would say, look, well, I want some of that Red Bow Magic. And so from there, it just continued to kind of snowball and people would know me as the red bow and having um, just red bow magic. And I would put hashtag red bow magic because that's when the internet started to even go a little bit more and I could hashtag things. Yeah. And so it just stuck. And so from there, being able to move to a different um, state, had to open, you know, to change uh, brokerages, open my own. I said, well, you know what? I'm just going to take that and just expand it uh, into uh, Texas. And so it's still sticking. It still sticks. And I think it looks pretty good. Uh, and um, yeah, so that's where the red bow comes. And I, this time I was able to design the logo and there, yeah. you know, the logo being designed. Um, there is a, you know, just a little bit of a meaning just, just, just for me personally on the, on the logo design. But yeah, it still sticks and, you know, people still love it. So no, I think it's really, really cool. And it's always <laughs> fun to see them in like the videos and the TikToks and stuff like that. So, you know, and, and I love brands, uh, like, as you know, like Move Me to Texas, like I love brands that like yeah. go like can can be transferable, can be whatever, you, you know, go. and it's like if you're if you're, you know, Tamika Brokerage, like, you know, then it's like, oh, OK, well, that's like her thing. Yep. Um, and so I always love those, those brands that, you know, can kind of go anywhere or, I mean, and clearly I'm a little landlocked, but go anywhere <laughs> and, and, you know, be, be, uh, be a larger thing. So, I mean, Texas yeah. is pretty big, so, you know, you know, yeah. I mean, <laughs> we were talking, we were talking before this and like, we're, we're pretty close to each other, but also pretty far away. So yeah. I, yeah. I, Man, I, Texas, Texas is large. big. Very I large. thought California was big, but Texas is pretty big. But like, again, I, I, uh, Texas has welcomed me with open arms. I'm excited about the next steps and then the next phase of doing a lot of things and expansion over here in Texas, as well as still what we got going on there in the Bay area. Okay. So, um, love in Texas. Awesome. Well, you know, always, <laughs> we're always welcoming here. I would say the biggest difference is probably like the density, right? As far as land and population yeah. density coming from the Bay. I know you guys yeah. don't have much land left out there. <laughs> uh, and here we certainly have a ton. So, <laughs> you know, what? but see, that's the, the blessing and the curse, right? Because things are so darn far away. But, you know, um, like we were talking about before, like, I, I, I'm so super excited because Anyone that knows me and they knows my brand and what I do, like I believe home ownership is a reality for all 100%. And look, hey, prices are getting you know crazy. They just are in areas of Texas too. Shoot, yeah. One of the reasons why we chose um, you know Tyler and the developer even over here is just for that very thing to make sure that it's affordable and affordable housing for people to become homeowners and they have enough land over here to do it. Versus over there in, in Cali, we we don't we don't have as yeah. much um, but over here we do and for some very quality sustainable building um, that's what I'm looking forward to for this next coming year and I'm so excited uh, about I want to see people in homes and I'm willing to move across the darn U.S. Uh, in order yeah. to create opportunities for people to actually find that and we're talking about in the you know the low 200 range but beautiful um, homes with um, with community um, so yeah it's 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 definitely a gift that continues to keep giving um, Texas that is so yeah I love that. And I can't wait to, to see the progress, you know, online and just in general, mm -hmm. um, because I know, you know, like uh, that's just, that's just really <laughs> cool. And it's something that uh, we talk about here, you know, and, and I've yeah. uh, like, we, we developed some property and stuff like that. And it's like, we try to stay on the, the bottom half, right. Of the uh, below the, the average price point and things like that, because like, I mean, it, it is true. Like it's very difficult yeah. to find affordable properties so that's it awesome. is and that that are nice you know that are yeah. nice that, yeah. that can hold a candle <laughs> to anything that you yeah. do 
And that's the beautiful thing about just, just, just the developer I'm with. He's, he's also too kept from California, but he's actually yeah. from Texas. And so a lot of the things that he does is, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be expanding into some other things. And shoot, I'm trying to create some farmers, some, some micro green farmer people, you know, uh, that'd be able to make some money off of their land as well. Yeah. So sustainability. No, I'm excited. I'm excited to, to hear, <laughs> hear and see the progress. Um, and, and yeah, it's going to be cool to watch that unfold for sure. Yeah. So right on, Katie. the podcast name is real advice. And I haven't asked you a direct question asking for your advice. We've kind of, you okay. know, obviously gone around and talked about social, we talked about, you know, content and <laughs> stuff like that. What would be your advice for <clears throat> a brand new agent? Like you've been in the market, you know, you've been in mm-hmm. real estate for a while. You've seen up markets, down markets, mm-hmm. different regions, stuff like that. Brand new agent, just got my license, just hung it with a brokerage. Now what? What's your advice? Yeah, no advice. Um, I think the biggest thing, yeah, you know, there's that statistic that keeps looming. It's been looming for like 18 years, man. You know, like, uh, you know, what is it? 80% of agents that come in, they fail within the first five years. I think that's just a yeah. crazy statistic. I think it may be about 75% now. Um, but obviously what we're doing isn't working. Um, and, and, and my take on this, as crazy as it may seem, is honestly those coming into this market, if you find um, that that passion, that one thing, it's not even a why, it's probably bigger than a why, um, that one thing that will sustain you no matter what market that you're in, you know that this is the direction that you should be going in your life. And when you know that, hook or crook, bad market, up, down, upside down market, it doesn't matter what it is, you will know and you will have that sustainability and that steadfastness to keep going. Um, and I say that too, because I've had ups and downs, kids being born. There's so many things that I went through, but I knew that I knew that this is the one industry that I was not going to leave and I was going to be a part of. And that for me has been probably my saving grace. And that's what I would say for someone else. Like if you're in this for the right reasons, my reasons was not the money. It wasn't just, it wasn't none of that stuff. It really yeah. because it was because I wanted to help people. And if you have the main reason, the main reason why you will always succeed in helping people you can't go wrong but if you're looking to make a buck i mean there's plenty of agents that have done that and are doing very well at doing that but a lot of them are unfulfilled you know but if you want to do this be fulfilled and still have a sustainable business um i'd say catch that part and make people your biggest priority and you will never go wrong yeah doing the right thing (laughs) is always the right thing so okay if i've got one last question for you all right let's go If it were your last meal on earth, what would you be eating? Oh, last meal on earth. It could be something home cooked. It could be somewhere out. It could be, you know, anywhere in the world. You know, okay. Maybe it's just because it's been like about four months since I had it because I'm a Bay Area girl. Um, But I've hadn't had pho. My gosh. Like, um, come down to Houston, please. (laughs) Come down (laughs) here. I'll hook it's you been up. a little bit. It's been a little bit, but man, like, uh, yeah, it's the black. Pro- I'm, I'm black. Yes, I'm saying that. Like, honestly, you're black. Like, uh, I'm black. Believe it or what? not, but I do have some, I do have some Asian in me though too. Right? So that's probably one reason why too. But no, no, honestly, that is like that's probably the one meal that I would probably just sip on, have sriracha in, like just just pile everything in and just like, sit in it last meal and just savor it to the end and it would have to be like the beef blank you know kind of like yeah yeah that would probably be it okay (laughs) so that lasts me a while (laughs) first of all you need you need to make a trip down here some point in the next couple months and (laughs) houston is known for its vietnamese food i don't know if you know really no i did not know that no (laughs) and like so that we have like we have like bougie pho and then we have like you know the restaurant where you're like, are you sure this is where we're going? Yeah, it was like, yeah, that's the, that's the best. And everything the in stuff. between, right? And like <laughs> there's some like some like really good like, and you know it's it's been cooler in Texas, you know, hot yeah. and cold, but it's been cooler. Yeah. So yeah. you know I've been eating a lot of pho and ramen and noodles and soups because it's just like so nice. It's so warming, you know. It's comforting, and, yes. dude. So just let me know when you want to come down here, <laughs> and I will. Tr- I mean, a bowl of pho is like. Eight dollars. I will treat I know. you I'm to. I'm cheap. Day. I'm cheap. <laughs> I got you. I got you. All right. Anyways, so thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate Absolutely. you. 
I'm excited to see everything mm -hmm. that 2023 and beyond, obviously, but 2023 has in store for you and, and all of your projects and social content. And I just can't wait to follow along with the journey. So if people don't Thank already you. follow you on social media, where's the best place for them to follow you? Yeah, well, we already talked about it. So TikTok, real estate underscore um, T. Um, but then also Instagram is a pretty second level one. Um, Tamika, I think my little handle's up there, but at Tamika Ellsworth, um, you can catch me there. Um, or you can just even look up Red Bow uh, Real Estate. You can catch me on there uh, as well. She's all over. She's all over. Cool. Well, again, Probably too you. much. <laughs> yeah, too I know, easy right? for a stalker. Too easy for a stalker, man. Ooh. <laughs> Don't put right. <laughs> very much appreciated. I will talk to you very soon. Right on, Katie. Take it easy. Thank you for having me.